Hi, I am Lalit Vasist and you are watching Engineering Made Easy. Friends, with the help of this beautiful interactive simulation, I will explain you the concept of Ohm's Law. Here in this simulation, we will see the definition of Ohm's Law, the formula of Ohm's Law and how does it work. We will understand this law by measuring currents and voltages with the help of ammeter and voltmeter. I will also discuss the graph drawn between current and voltage to explain Ohm's law. So I request you to watch this video till the end. So let's start what we mean by Ohm's law. The Ohm's law was given by a German physicist George Ohm's and according to Ohm's law the voltage applied across a resistor is directly proportional to the current passing through that resistor. So mathematically we can say that V is directly proportional to I. You can see it here also V is directly proportional to I. Here V is measured in volts and I is in amperes okay SI units and uh, here you can see R. R is the constant of proportionality. So V equals to I R is the mathematical representation of the Ohm's law. This is what we call the Ohm's law. You can understand it uh, with the help of this graph also that uh, here on the x axis I have current and on the y axis I have voltage. This is a graph between two different resistors having one is of low resistance and another is of high resistance. If I increase the voltage then the current will also increase in the same proportion that's why this line is straight. I will explain you this graph but before this I will uh, demonstrate the Ohm's law with the help of that simulation. We will come to this graph later. Now let's understand it with the help of this simulation. As I told you that according to Ohm's law V is in direct proportion to the current I. Okay, So let's see how it happens practically. Here you see that uh, this is a 10 volt battery and uh, I have also connected a 10 ohm resistance here and an ammeter in series. You need to know that uh, ammeter is always connected in series while uh, we connect voltmeter in parallel. Now I want to calculate voltage and current in this circuit to prove Ohm's law. Here is the voltmeter that can be used to measure voltage. So let's see. So you can see the reading is 10 volts in the voltmeter. So this is the voltage across this resistor. Now I want to increase the voltage from 10 volts. You can also see the value of current is 1 ampere. Now if I increase uh, the voltage then the current should also increase in the same proportion as stated by Ohm's law because V is in direct proportion to the current I. So if I make this value from 10 volts to 20 volts that is double of this voltage then the current should also double from 1 ampere to 2 amperes. So let's see what happens. Make it uh, 20 volts. Okay so the voltage is 20 volts and current is also 2 amperes. If I increase it further let's make it uh, 40 volts then current should also be doubled. Let's make it 40 volts. So current has also increased to 4 amperes from 2 amperes. If I decrease it uh, to 5, okay, 5 volts. 5 volts means I have decreased it 8 times. So the current has also decreased 8 times. So in this way we have uh, deduced that uh, the current in the circuit or current in this resistor varies in direct proportion to the voltage applied across it. So V is directly proportional to I. This is actually the Ohm's law. You can also uh, understand it with the help of a graph. So as we discussed that uh, according to Ohm's law V is directly proportional to I. You can see it here also. As we increase V voltage across the resistor the current also increases in the same proportion. To calculate resistance I I can divide the value of uh, V by the current. V by I is R. Okay. So with the help of this graph I can easily find the value of resistance that is used here. If I have uh, V1 and I1 or I have V2 and V2 or I2 values. So R would be V1 divided by I1. We can also find the value of R 
if I have V2 and I2 by calculating V2 divided by I2. So in both of these cases, the same value of resistance R will be obtained because it is in direct proportion. That's why it is a straight line. Now, as we can calculate the value of resistance with the help of this graph, if I have two resistors, then with the help of this graph, I can calculate whether any resistance is low or high just by observing the graph. You can see it uh, in this example. Suppose I have uh, two straight lines. The one is for high resistance and another is for low resistance. But how did I know that uh, this, this line is for high resistance and this is for low resistance? I can easily find it out if uh, I draw a straight line. Let's say uh, I'm drawing this uh, blue colored line vertically. It means I'm making the value of current constant. Let's see this value is I to flow a current equal to the value of this I while using one resistor I need to apply voltage V1 and for the same amount of current I to flow in case of another resistor I need a higher voltage V2. Since R is equals to V divided by I with the help of this formula and I is here constant which is in denominator V divided by I. Since I is constant if if there is a value of V which is larger for one resistor then the resistance would be higher because its numerator is high. So in this case this uh, line is showing the value of for value for high resistance because V2 is high for this case. So we can easily deduce that uh, this straight line is representing high resistance and this is representing low resistance because flowing of same amount of current needs higher voltage in case of this. So this is definitely having high resistance. So in this way we can analyze the graph of voltage and current and can easily calculate the value of resistance and also can compare the values of resistance if we have different straight lines which is having higher resistance by uh, seeing there by observing their slopes only. Higher slope means high resistance and lower slope means low resistance. So I think you got the concept. So friends if you like this video then please click on the like button and share this video with your friends. And for more such videos you can subscribe to my YouTube channel Engineering Made Easy. In next videos I will discuss the Kirchhoff's current law KCL and Kirchhoff's voltage law and other uh, different laws and concepts related to electrical and electronics. So keep watching the video, keep watching the channel and thank you for watching this video till the end. See you soon in the next video till then bye bye and take care guys.